All right, guys, so today is just a real quick off the cuff video. I'm actually doing a, a woman's fragrance uh, currently on version 11. Uh, I've got all my materials laid out here, so I'm just going to kind of let you just kind of view live as I just kind of wing it and just kind of go through all my different thought processes as I add this. So this female's fragrance, uh, so-called right now it's called badass bitch <laughs> so it's supposed to be a very fruity top end uh, that kind of transitions transitions into uh, something just a little bit more warmer and really really super sweet so we're just gonna dive right in and I'm just gonna start talking as I do all this I've got my scotch ready gotta always have a glass of scotch when you do this so First ingredient we're going with, got to do your beaker here, and once that's good, you're going to tear it out. I'm going to start with my musk. I've got my computer here, which you probably can't see off camera, that has all my formula and all my percentages. So I am not a big fan of musk in this particular fragrance because I find that too much musk will dampen or flatten a fragrance. So I'm going to start off with just one drop of musk, just, and this one's already diluted down to 50%. It's a musk blend that I created that has a little bit of galaxolide, uh, edenolide, and I believe uh, exaltolide total. So every time I do any sort of drop, I then go to my laptop here and just put in how many grams I added. So we did one drop and that was a little under 0 0.02 grams of musk and that only is going to be a little over 2% of the fragrance concentrate. Next one we're going to do is a sandalwood accord that I created. It's got like maybe six or seven different materials. Uh, this one I'm going to do two drops. And this is also pre-diluted to 50% because I found when I use it at 100% one drop will just over overpower everything so it's easier accurate dosing when I dilute things down as you'll you'll start to see so that one is 0 0.038 grams now this next one which is the heart of the fragrance is a sugar accord which there is a forum member on base notes Paul Killer created this sugar accord and it is sickingly sweet but it is so perfect for this fragrance uh, it smells like sugar it almost smells like marshmallows that haven't been roasted yet so I love this one and we're gonna use a lot of it it's already <laughs> diluted down to like 40% so my last formula one two three four five I did four drops and the person that I'm making this for said she wants it more sweeter. She wants more marshmallow. So I was like, okay, more, mar mar more, ugh, more marshmallow you will get. So that's five drops at 40% dilution, which is 0 0.09 grams. And the one thing that I am going to do differently with this perfume is the Sugar Accord, even though it's marshmallow-like, it doesn't necessarily have that roasted marshmallow, which is really creamy and just has that like, nice burnt roastedness that everyone kind of associates with marshmallow. So I have a Caramel Accord that I am gonna do two drops of this. Oh, we're gonna go three, it looks like. Well, we'll see how it goes. See what happens, you, you gotta be steady. So luckily that's diluted down to 25%. So that won't be so bad, 0 0.055. And the Caramel Accord is just gonna give it that roastedness to the marshmallow, because car marshmallow is essentially just caramelized sugar. So the Sugar Accord with the Caramel Accord should give it a more roasted kind of scent. The next one we're gonna add in is a leather cord. So because this perfume is titled Badass Bitch, I wanted to add 
some sort of leatherness to this to give it uh, kind of that badass kind of flavor to it, I guess you can say. Now this leather cord I pre-made, it's got roughly small, like four materials in there, but I diluted it down to 10%. And in this one, just one drop in this blend will do it. Cause I, I tried it with two drops and when you'd use two drops of 10% of a leather cord, it, I, it was a little bit too leathery for me. The leather was starting to come out in the forefront too much. And I didn't want that. I wanted the leather to sit in the background more of a feel, not so much as a scent. Okay. And if you can't see, I'm working from here going down. It's basically, I've got all my base notes that goes to my mid and my top notes. So the next one I'm going to add in is Cashmoran, which is pre-diluted down to 10%. And Cashmoran gives a nice, soft, pillowy, velvety, kind of wood, but not really a wood. It also has slightly pine facets, but not really. So I keep this one pretty low. So just two drops at 10%, which is 0 0.3 grams. And the fragrance concentrate, I'm still under 1% total. So I am good with that. And then the last of the base notes, oh, that's a good one. This is a pre-blended accord from Perfumer's Apprentice, which this is their rendition of Palo Santo wood. And I am just gonna do one drop of this. Because the person I am making this for loves Palo Santo. So as far as a wood, I, I didn't wanna use just sandalwood. I wanted to kind of dirty it up a little bit with Palo Santo. That's 0 0.022 grams. Okay. So that takes care of all the base notes. So now we're going to move into some of the heart mid notes, some of the blenders and some of the fillers. First thing I'm gonna go with is the old trusty ISOE Super. And in this formula, I am just doing one drop. And this is just essentially creating a nice transparent bed for every ingredient to sit in. And the same goes for Hedion. Hedion does the same thing, but it's a little bit more of a white floral transparent bed. And this just kind of levels everything out quite nicely. I'm gonna do two drops of this. Now the Isoe Super and Hedion are 100% strength. I never dilute these because they're so light and transparent as it is that there's no need to dilute it. Let's see, 0.046, we're good with that. And then, sip of whiskey. Ah, good stuff. Now the heart floral in this perfume is gardenia. And I did not make a Gardenia Accord myself, so, but I did get a hold of Perfumer's Apprentice makes their own house blend Gardenia Accord. And it smells pretty good. It's a little spicier than what I would like, but for this perfume, it's working okay so far. So at, uh, hmm, you know what? On the fly, what I did notice with Gardenia Accord, this one is potent. This one's really, really potent. So what I'm going to do is da, 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 save that one for last because I'm gonna pre-dilute it to 50%. The next floral, we're gonna do a rose. And this particular rose, I have like four different rose accords ranging from light and petal-like to, you know, something spicy. And this is my rose accord number four, which is more of your generic everyday rose. And I've got just one drop. The reason why I use one drop of this one is because in this particular cord that I created, there's Rose, Rosarine Super in here, which is a very metallic smelling rose and it's so potent. So when I use this Rose Accord number four of mine, I try not to go more than one to two drops. 
Next, we're going to add in, it's more of, it's not an aldehyde, but it's, it's like an ozonic material. And this is going to be your star fluor. And star fluors kind of has this very floral open breeziness that's going to open up the middle and the top end a little bit. And it's pre-diluted down to 10%. So I'm just going to do well, one drop. Because usually one drop is all you need. 0.17. One drop at 10% uh, puts me at 0.5% of the fragrance concentrate. So that's pretty much all I'm going to need. Now in this batch, I'm actually testing two middle notes. One is to give it a more fruity kind of top to middle. In the heart notes, uh, there's paradisimide, which is like a paradise fruit. And it's, it's, it's worked good for the past 10 or so blends that I've done in this perfume, but I'm also gonna do another batch after this that does dew fruit, uh, which is a little bit more sweeter. It's a little bit more forgiving. But in this blend, I'm sticking with the original formula. And this one's diluted down to 25%. So we're gonna do one, two drops of that. So I know you can't see any of the bottles. Uh, a lot of these bottles have on their written, the actual dilution percentages that they're down to. So dilution is key for accurate dosing, because if you leave everything neat at 100%, you're gonna be working in much larger batches to get everything kind of really balanced. And then the last of the heart notes, I have a Rose Absolute from Morocco, and this is a more spicy rose. So this complements my Rose Accord a little bit, which is a little bit more fresh and airy and light. This spicy rose, diluted down to 25%, I'm gonna do two drops to give it a little bit more naturalness in that rose floral. But because it is an absolute, it's a natural, it doesn't last very long. So my rose accord with being mostly chemical uh, with the absolute kind of marries everything together quite well. Okay. Now to the top notes. So with this fragrance, the top is supposed to be very feminine and very peachy, very fruity. So I've been using on these past trials, uh, I've got uh, Robert Tett makes a, a peach, a natural peach fragrance, and it's so thick. And this is really gonna be the heart of the fragrance in the top end, but I'm only using two drops. So we'll go one, two. And the reason for that is because it's a natural, doesn't last as long, but I'm gonna, com I'm gonna combo it with a, a chemical, nectaril, that will help drag it out a little bit. So let me just enter in my grams here, point zero, zero five nine. That's a real thick, heavy one. Two drops is almost point zero six. Okay. On to the nectaril, which is aroma chemical that smells like nectarines and peaches. That'll complement the natural peach I just added in there. This one's at full strength. And we're gonna go two drops of this. One, two. Point four, seven, so. 0.047, all right. And I'm also gonna add in a little bit of mandarin, just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of uh, citrusiness, a little orange zest. Not a lot, 100% strength, just one drop. Kind of offsets the tangerine and peach, so it's just not so fruity and it just adds a little citrus zing. All right, 0 0.019. Now we're gonna add in some aldehydes, or actually this is not an aldehyde. This is, uh, they call it so-called peach C14. And technically it's not an aldehyde, but it's super, super strong. And this goes well with the peach and nectarine that I've already added in. This is gonna help give it some lift and open up the top end a little bit. I've got this pre-diluted down to 10%. 
just gonna add in one drop. Just like that. Okay, 0 0.017. Now this next one is kind of an oddball. Take a sip of whiskey. And it's a aroma chemical called lemon isle. And this one smells just like lemons, but it's a strong lemon scent. Like you need to dilute the living crap out of this. Cause if you don't, your entire blend just smells like lemon cleaner, but it's a long lasting aroma chemical that goes well beyond the mid into the base notes. So this helps drag some of the citruses and some of the top note, like the orange that I added and maybe the nectaril in well beyond the, the top notes into the middle notes. So I have this diluted down to 5% because it's pretty strong, but I'm gonna add in two drops. And in this blend, you can't really smell it. It's cause it's kind of overshadowed with all the peach and the nectar, nectarines and all that stuff. But it's there to just give the citruses just a nice little longer longevity. Almost done, down to the final few. Now we're gonna add in something, another ozonic, kind of a top to middle, and this is called melanol. And this one smells very ozonic with a little hint of melon, kind of like cantaloupe, and it's strong. So I have it diluted down to just 5%. And we're gonna go with just one drop of that. And this again, will just open up the top end and kind of lay a hand in some of that fruitiness that we're trying to go for while giving it a nice open airy feel. That's at 0 0.018 grams. Lastly, I'm just gonna sneak in some linalol. I don't need to, but in this particular fragrance, I added it in and ever since I did, every time I've done past trials without it, they just, didn't sit right with me. Linalol is just a very faint smelling top note and it helps kind of give a little bit of lift to the top note. Just one drop of that. Helps transition and get your nose ready for the gardenia and the rose, so to speak. That is 0 0.018. And then the last one we're gonna add in, well, we still gotta add in our gardenia, but first we gotta pre-dilute it on the fly. This one is a new chemical that I just recently got a few weeks ago and I'm loving the hell out of this. This is Orange Jivco by Jivodan and it's an aroma chemical that just smells like a generic orange, like a sweet orange, but it lasts a hell of a long time. This will go from top all the way through your base notes and it's super strong, so I have it diluted down to 25%. And just one drop of this reinforces the mandarin orange, the natural mandarin orange that I added in earlier and kind of helps drag that down too. So it, pl it plays hand in hand with the, with the lemon aisle. So it gives the top end some, not just, just your peaches, but now a little bit of faint citruses in the back that'll kind of help transition it into the mid notes. All right, now we need to add in some gardenia. So I teared all this out. And let's see, move that out of here. Put in a fresh beaker. So we wanna dilute this gardenia really quick to 50%, because when I use it at 100%, just it's too powerful for me, and one, one wrong drop will just sway it into just all you smell is gardenia. And for this particular gardenia, it's, it's pretty spicy smelling, and I don't want it too spicy because I have some other spicy facets from all these other things that I'm adding. So the gardenia, we're gonna pre-dilute to 50%. So I'm just gonna go, at this, it doesn't matter how many drops, just put in a few drops. But just remember the weight, the weight is important. And so we're at 0.138. So now we're gonna add in 0.138 of just pure alcohol. Came out to about 0.14, so close enough for me. Mix this up, and this is gonna be our 50% dilution for our gardenia.
didn't want to make a lot because I'm just going to do it just for this, this quick little trial here. And if all works well on this batch, I may make a its own bottle at a 50% dilution, but I don't use Gardenia enough to want a, its own bottle at that dilution. So Gardenia at 50%. And this formula that I'm working on right now, we are going to add in four drops of the 50%. So we'll put this back in here. Tear it out. One, two, three, four. All right. 0 0.071. Perfect. So you can't see this computer, but it lists every gram that I've added. And now I'm going to make this into a, a hefty EDT to a light EDP concentration. So we're gonna shoot for 15%. So let's add in, just bear with me. Seven, we We're gonna add in 1.8 grams of perfumer's alcohol, and that'll give me roughly a little over 15%, which is a light EDP concentration, which should suit this one just fine. So 1.8%. This slathered in. Ooh, getting close, getting close. Drop by drop at this point. There it is, 1.8. Perfect. Now we're just going to swish it around real quick. So we've got everything in there from base to middle to top. Made this into an EDP concentration at roughly 15%. And what I'm doing differently in this batch that I've done in the past 11 or 12 is I'm adding in some of the caramel accord to kind of give the sugary marshmallow a little bit more burntness, a little bit more caramelized sugar kind of scent to sweeten it up some. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's it right there. All right, so with that, we are going to now just take empty spray vial, give it a couple more swirls here. Yeah, it smells real nice, actually. Adding that caramel was a sure win. And off camera, you guys can't see, but I keep these little tester vials full of all my concoctions and all my trial runs. They're scattered throughout the house everywhere, so it's pretty funny, actually. Shake it up. Okay, give it a quick sniff in the air. Now this is, I'm gonna let this one sit. So this one, in this blend, I added in two drops of caramel accord, which is already pre-diluted to 25%, and I'm already picking it up very obviously. So I might wanna do another trial run after this. I'll probably let this sit for 24 hours and smell it again tomorrow once everything settles. I may wanna try this again with just one drop of the caramel accord, because I'm picking it up pretty heavily right off the top, actually. Yeah. So that's it. That was a quick rundown of this badass bitch fragrance that I've been working on right now. And you can see kind of my thought process and how I kind of do things. And uh, actually, I'll show you guys my formula real quick. So let me switch this computer around. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this. So looking at the formula here, 
starts off at the bass notes. We've got our musk, shows here our percent in the raw concentrate. That's the one I focus on most. And then the formula here in the raw concentrate. Got our, we got musk, we've got our sandalwood, our marshmallow, some leather, some cashmeran, palo santo. I actually added in three drops of caramel. Oh, that's right, I accidentally put in three drops. And definitely gonna lower that on the next one. As we go to our middle notes, we can see our Isoe Super, Hedione, some of the Gardenia. Gardenia is pretty low, it's only at 8.7%. Uh, some Rose, the Star Fleur, Paradisi Mai, some Rose Absolute. And then we go down to our top notes. You can see the Natural Peach is almost at 15% of concentrate, which is really high, but that's what I'm going for in this. And then as you can see, like the, the real strong materials like Melanol, Lemon Isle are at less than 1%, so you have to be really light-handed with that stuff. And then as we go down to Perfumer's Alcohol, I added 1.8 drops, which gives me a little over 15% EDP concentration. And that was it. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this quick, impromptu video. Until next time.